Hello everybody, I'm Sam Harris and today we're going to have a look at the Advanced Logistics mod. The Advanced Logistics mod is basically exactly that what you thought the smart and programmable splitters are. But I will show you that later. After installing the mod, click in the top right corner to learn how to do that. You need to unlock the mod first. To do that, we're going to go to the hub, we're going to uh, go to tier 3, and there you have the advanced logistics node. To unlock it, you're going to need 25 rotors, 250 quick wires, and 200 iron plates. We then get access to two new buildings, that is the adjustable splitter and the adjustable merger. Basically, the new splitter going to allow you to adjust your outputs. You're going to do that in two ways. First of all, you can set a ratio. So you can say for each item on the left lane, you want to have two items on the middle lanes and seven items on the right lane or something other than that. The second thing you set is what happens if a belt gets full. But to really understand that, let me explain you in short words how the splitter works. So as long as items go in, the splitter is going to check first on the left lane uh, what is set there. If you have a ratio of 1, it's going to set one item through and then moves to the next lane. Two items, so okay, it's going to send two items through the lane and then it's going to check the right lane. It sees the 7 there, so it's going to send seven items through and is moving back to the first lane, the left one. And he's going to do that over and over and over again. So the next thing is what happens if the lane is full. So if he wants to push out the one item to the left lane, but there's no room anymore. Well, he's going to check what's in the if full column setup. The default skip to next output means it will just tell the system that it outputted the item even though it didn't and move to the next lane. So you skip the one in this case and just going to output two in the middle lane. If you set it to send to middle or send to right, it will send the items you have sent in, in the lane to the other lane. So in that example, um, if the lane is full, it would send this one item to the middle lane instead of the left lane. So the middle lane would get three items instead of two. And if the middle lane is full as well, the right lane would get 10 instead of the seven because it gets the one from the left, the two from the middle, and then the seven it normally gets. And the last option is to set it to wait. Wait just means if the lane is full, the um, system will stop and the splitter will wait till that line gets empty again in order to proceed its normal operations. And one more thing you might want to know, um, to know which line is the left, which one is the right, which one is the middle, you always need to look from the input of the splitter. Or, in case of the merger, you need to look from the output of the merger. The adjustable merger on the other side is exactly the same. The only difference really is that instead of deciding what happens if a lane is full, you decide what happens if a lane is empty. So, in that case, you can decide if it should take from another lane or wait or skip. So exactly the same thing then with the adjustable splitter. So basically that's all there is. But let's look a little bit more into what you really can do with the mergers and splitters and what use cases there are for them. We are going from pretty basic to more advanced setups and we're going to start with the merger. So the first thing you can do with the merger is using it to prioritize one line over another. To do that we're going to set it up like that. So we say we want to have one item in the left lane and we don't want to have any items in the middle or right lane. That way we make sure it's only going to take from the left lane. Unless the left lane is empty then we're going to take from the middle and if the middle lane is empty we're going to take from the right. 
That way we can easily make sure that the left container is going to empty first, then the middle one and the right one at last. But as a heads up, if the outgoing line is as fast or faster than the incoming line, there might be a split second where it thinks the middle line is empty and takes one from the left lane. So that's something that can happen. The next thing I want to show you is exactly the same thing, but with the splitters instead. So we can prioritize which lane or which container should get filled first. And as you can see, we set it up exactly the same way. We send it to all send it to left, so one item to left, zero, zero to the middle and right. And if the left is full, send it to the middle. If the middle is full, send it to the right. And it is going to do exactly that. So, success. So the next thing, of course, is to play with the ratios. So in that case, we're going to set it up that we're going to send most of the stuff to the constructor. A little bit, so two items um, to the middle, to the container, to our storage solution. And uh, the last little bit we're going to sync because we want to have the coupons. We don't want to ha have to wait till everything is full to get the first coupons. Of course, we're going to set it to skip to the next output because we don't want to the splitters to stop as soon as one lane, in that case the constructor probably first, is going to be full. And as you can see it's going to do exactly that. It's going to keep the ratios 2 to 1 between the storage and the um, crusher. And if the constructor did its job and needs some new stuff it will also feed that directly. In the next case, I'm going to show you how to use the advanced splitters as balances. So in that case, we're going to set it up like we would normally with normal splitters for the overflow method, but we're using the adjustable splitters, of course. To set them up, we need to know how many items a recipe from the constructors needs. So the first splitter I'm going to set up to send one part to the middle and four parts to the left. I did it here with 3 to the middle and 12 to the left because one constructor is going to need 3 crystals to produce the silica. But you could do it as well with uh, 1 and 4. The next splitter we're going to send 3 parts to the middle and 1 part to the right. And the one after that we're going to send 2 parts to the middle, 1 to the right. And the last one we just do an even split. And because we all set it up to skip to next output, even if one constructor get full, it would just uh, work and fill the other ones up. And as we can see, it's working just as expected. We get one part for each machine. In our case, that's three crystal per machine. And we don't have any machine fill up before the others. A little bit more complicated, but a lot more useful is we can do the same to feed manufacturers and assemblers with just one lane. So what we're going to do is we're going to have mergers on our input lane which are going to make sure that the ratios are exactly the ratios the manufacturers need. And after that we're going to use the splitters on the manufacturers just like we did with the constructors to make sure that each manufacturer gets an equal part. I'm going to set it up again so that each manufacturer gets a full load, but again you could do it with just a one force bit. So the first thing we need to know is the composition of the item we're going to produce. You can either just look it up in the manufacturer or you can um, open it up in your codex and just ping it as a to-do list. That way you have always on screen, which makes it a little bit easier. Next thing is we're going to set up our mergers. On four items, we're going to need two mergers. On three and two, we would need one. In that case, we're going to um, combine the computers and the heavy modular frames first into one line in a two at two ratios, because as we can see in the recipe, we're going to need two of both. And then we're going to set the second merger 
to integrate those with the rest. So we're going to need 15 automated wiring for each 10 electronics and four, that's two computers and two heavy modular frames combined. We're going to set it up to weight because it's really important that it doesn't mix up any of the ratios there. And we're going to do the same for the splitters. We're going to set them for weight because we need to have the ratios right. Now we're going to add this all together. So we know we have 29 items, 29 times five would be 144. Actually, we just need times four. So 29 times four is 116. So we're going to set it to the left. We're going to send 116 items in the middle. We're going to send 29. Again, you could do it with a one, two, four, and then one, two, three. I prefer to have all my items in, in manufacturer at the same time. And that's how we're going to set up each additional splitter till we have an even split in the last one. And as we can see, we're going to get uh, an equal amount of items for each manufacturers. In that case, that's one full load per manufacturer. As soon as the manufacturer gets full, the whole system will stop and wait till a manufacturer produces an item, gets space again, and then again we get one full load per manufacturer to fill up. And by looking into the manufacturers, we can see each manufacturer has the correct ratio of items and they won't back up anywhere. The last thing I wanted to show you is how to transport multiple items on a train or a other vehicle. Um, that might be interesting for low quantity items like heavy modular frames, motors, uh, all this stuff which you don't need in huge quantities but probably still need to move over long distances. That way you can move it in one train and don't have to make a separate lane for each of those items. So we just make sure the items go in the train in the XX ratio, we do the same thing we just did with the manufacturers. We have a uh, ratio splitter to set up. Those ratios are just the items per minute the machines on the other side needs all added together. And of course, we're going to set it to wait because we want to make sure that the ratios stay correct. On the other side, we just have some smart splitters, not even the adjustable, just the normal vanilla smart splitters connected to a few containers. Uh, we're going to need the containers because there can be a difference of a few hundred or a backlog of a few hundred items. So we need something to catch that up, but it won't be more. One container is definitely enough for no matter the size you're going to produce. Well, the smart splitter are just going to sort the items just as normal auto sort and feed the machines with those. So as easy as that can be. So that's it for today. I hope you found the video helpful and uh, found it a good showcase. You know what to do if you like the video or want to see more. As usual, have fun gaming and see you in the next video. Bye bye.